Good morning, Tom Harvick with H3 Sales and Marketing, representing Little Giant Safety. Here to talk to you this morning about ladder safety. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with Little Giant Ladders. The company's been around for 40 years. About 10 years ago, they decided they were going to start making ladders for professionals who use ladders every day uh, on the job. And they asked themselves, well, what does the ladder industry need? And what they found in their research is every day there are 2,000 ladder accidents resulting in some form of injury. So that's strains and sprains, cuts and bruises, broken bones, puncture wounds, massive head trauma. It runs the whole gamut. And of those 2,000 injuries, 100 will result in a permanently life-altering injury. So now that individual can no longer work to the same capacity if they can work at all. They can't pick up their kids or their grandkids. They have to live the rest of their life on pain medication. Permanently life-altering. And then every year there's approximately 600 to 700 plus fatal falls in industry. And if you break down the Bureau of Labor Statistics, anywhere from 25 to 40% of those are off of ladders. So on average, a person dies every day in a ladder related accident. So looking at those numbers, Little Giant was like, wow, um, that's unacceptable. So rather than call the division Little Giant Professional, we call the division Little Giant Safety. And our mission is to prevent injuries and save lives. Uh, one way we're gonna do that is to build safer ladders. Uh, so I'll be pointing out some of the safety uh, enhancements that Little Giant Ladders have as we go through. But the other is through training, because we can give you the world's greatest tool, but if we don't give you or teach you how to use it, we could be doing you more harm than good. So today we're gonna talk about ladder safety. And when it comes to ladder safety, I break it down into five main steps. The first is selection, choosing the right ladder for the job. The second is inspection, taking a moment to inspect your ladder each and every time before you use it to make sure it's a safe piece of equipment. The third is setup. Uh, that not only includes just setting up your ladder, but also setting up your area, isolating any hazards that might be present in the work environment. The fourth is proper usage. So we're gonna talk about three points of contact, not overreaching. And then fifth, maintenance and storage, taking care of your ladder so when you come in the next day, you've got a safe piece of equipment to climb. So the first thing I wanna talk about is selection. Just like anything, you want to choose the right tool for the job. So, you know, a $60 Proto screwdriver is great when you use it as a screwdriver. Once you start using it as a chisel or a pry bar, all bets are off. So we always want to make sure that we're choosing the right tool for the job, and that includes our ladder. So the first thing you want to think about when choosing the right ladder for the job is what is my ladder made out of? So most ladders are made from either wood, fiberglass, or aluminum. Now, wood ladders, unless they're a job-made ladder, uh, really don't have much of a place in a professional working environment. They're okay for getting a jar of cookies off the top of the refrigerator, but other than that, leave the wooden ladders at home. So that leaves you with aluminum and fiberglass. Now, believe it or not, aluminum ladders are actually lighter weight than fiberglass. People think fiberglass ladders are gonna be lighter weight because that's what they make Corvette body parts out of. But in fact, it takes more material to get the same strength as you get with aluminum ladder. So a fiberglass ladder ends up being heavier. On top of that, fiberglass ladders are 50 to 100% more expensive than a comparable aluminum ladder. So if aluminum ladders are lighter and less expensive, when would I not want to use an aluminum ladder? Well, in the presence of electricity. OSHA says specifically, when exposed to electrical hazards, ladders with aluminum side rail should not be used. So ask yourself, am I gonna be exposed to electrical hazards today? Uh, most construction sites won't even let you bring an aluminum ladder on site because of all the extension cords and generators and open wiring within the site. So if you're just painting the side of a building with no electrical hazards, an aluminum ladder is fine. But otherwise, if there's any chance that you might encounter an electrical hazard, you always want to use a fiberglass ladder. Next thing you want to think about is what type of ladder do I need for my job? Uh, when I'm, think ahead of what are you going to be doing with your job? Are you going to be using your ladder to work directly overhead? Are you going to be using your ladder to access another level? That's going to determine what type of ladder you need. So for example, three guys, have to get a job done directly overhead, change out a light bulb, but all they have is an extension ladder. So how are they gonna get the job done? Well, there's a picture of it on the internet, so you know it's true. Two guys are standing like this, bracing the ladder, while the other worker is climbing up the back of the ladder. That's using the wrong type of ladder for the job. So it seems obvious, if you're gonna be working directly overhead, you use a self-supporting A-frame type ladder. Conversely, if you're gonna be using your ladder to get up on top of another surface, you always want to use a straight ladder or an extension ladder, okay? But a, an A-frame ladder is a working platform, okay? You don't ever use an A-frame ladder to get up on top of another surface, okay? Um, even though everyone's done it, use your ladder to get up on the roof, step on the top cap of the A-frame ladder, 
that you're not supposed to. If you're going to be using your ladder to get up on top of another surface, you always use a straight ladder or an extension ladder. So think about the type of work you're going to be, your work you're going to be doing. If you don't know, perhaps this ladder is your option. Okay. So the first thing I want to point out is the most common form of ladder accidents are handling injuries. Just picking them up, putting them on top of the truck, closing them up, sometimes pinching your fingers. So wherever we can, we put wheels on them. Right? Therefore, you don't have to carry the ladder. But if you find you have to carry your ladder, always use proper lifting technique. So always lift with your legs and always turn with your legs, okay? If you want to tear a disc in your back, the best way to do it is pick up a heavy ladder and rotate your spine. Never do that. Always pick up your ladder properly, rotate with your legs, and turn with your legs, okay? So, watch for the handling injuries. Now this ladder is the articulating style of ladder. Little Giant invented this type of ladder. Other people manufactured ladders similar to it, but we're kind of like the Xerox of the articulating ladder cat. Now, when you open this particular ladder up, it's a double-sided A-frame rated at 300 pounds on each side. Not 600 pounds total, 300 pounds each side. So many times you'll see two workers, one standing on one side of the ladder and another standing on the other side, and that ladder was not designed for that purpose. So we want to make sure we're using the right type of ladder. If we're going to be using it in a double-sided uh, scenario, we want to make sure we're using a ladder that's designed specifically for that purpose. So this particular, particular ladder is designed for that purpose. This is also a double-sided A-frame ladder. This one is not. So when we talk about labels, we'll be talking about making sure we've got the right type of ladder for that type of work. Okay, so this particular ladder is adjustable in height, so it will go from four, five, six, seven feet. Just like that, you got yourself a seven-foot A-frame ladder. Now, by having a ladder that's adjustable in height, you're less likely to have the wrong size ladder for the job. Because what happens when you have the wrong size ladder for the job? A lot of times, you know, you've got a choice of a six foot, eight foot, 10 foot, 12 foot A-frame. You know you gotta carry the ladder clear across the job site up three or four flights of stairs. So you grab the six footer because it's lightest. You get to your job site and realize, oh no, this isn't tall enough. Now what are people gonna do? What people do a lot of times is the ridic ridiculous things like we wouldn't do, like stand on the top step or the top cap of the ladder, or stand on the top three ladders of your extension ladder. Many times people will take a uh, pile of loose materials. I've seen five gallon buckets under each leg to make the ladder tall enough. I've seen two, ladder, two extension ladders tied together to make one long extension ladder. You can't do any of those things. So really, if you realize your ladder isn't tall enough for the job, what's the only right thing to do? Go get the right size ladder. So by having a ladder that is extendable in height, you minimize the chance of running into that scenario where you either have to go all the way back and go get the right size ladder or take a chance on a ladder that isn't tall enough for the job and risk a life-changing injury or a fatality. So this ladder is adjustable in height. Now, OSHA says that the safest way to work is to always face the inside of your ladder and face your work. But what happens a lot of times is you've got a 10 foot, 12 foot A-frame ladder, you push it up against the wall by the time you climb up that ladder, now you can't reach your work. So what do people do? Well, a lot of times people will put the ladder up against the wall and work sideways off the ladder. So now you're risking a twisting back injury. And if you're doing anything forceful like drilling into concrete or steel, you're actually pushing against the balance point of the ladder. Okay? So with an articulating ladder like this or adjustable height ladder, you can simply put it into a 90 degree angle, butt that up against your wall. Now you have a 90 degree interface with your wall. You're reaching your work, you're facing your work. If you lose your balance, you're more likely to fall into the ladder rather than off the back. But oftentimes what you'll see people do is they'll collapse their A-frame ladder, simply lean it against the wall and climb up the ladder. Once again, 99 times out of 100 when you see that situation, that ladder was not designed for that purpose, okay? So basically that's an OSHA citation. So there are ladders that you can do that with. For example, our King Combo is a 375 pound A-frame ladder, designed as a freestanding A-frame ladder, but also can be used in a leaning application because of this wall pad here, okay? So 
on the labels, it shows that that ladder is designed for that purpose. We also take it one step further. So with this rotating wall pad, we can now put it onto a post, onto a stud, onto the outside of a corner or an inside of a corner. So you can take our ladder, put it on the corner and climb up it just like that. But once again, make sure that ladder is designed for that purpose. Now, this level of adjustability on adjustable ladders, articulated ladders, allows you to reuse these ladders on an uneven surface, stairway, loading dock, what have you. And then if it turns out, well, I really need to get up on top of that trailer, which I don't recommend, but on top of another surface, you can then push it to an extension ladder. So now you have a 15 foot or a 19 foot extension ladder, depending on the model, that you don't have to put on top of the truck at the end of the day. You simply collapse it. Break it down, roll it away, and you're good to go. So the point is, if you don't know what type of work you're gonna be doing that day, or you might be doing a multiple type of task, perhaps this ladder is your solution. Or the King Combo also. In addition to being a leaning ladder and a freestanding ladder, is also going to turn into a straight ladder, just like that. So multiple types of ladders are one. So think about what type of work you're going to be doing and whether your ladder is the right type of ladder for the job. Next thing you want to think about is what is the weight rating of my ladder, okay? Uh, most ladders are rated at 200, 225, 300, 375 pounds. What happens a lot of times is when it's time to replace the ladder, someone hands someone a credit card, they run down to the local hardware store, they come back and go, hey boss, check out this ladder I got. It was 80 bucks, and look how light it is. Well, that ladder's weighted at 200 pounds. Most people I know are right about 200 pounds, if not over. So I'm about 190, depending on the day. Uh, you add some steel-toed boots, tool belt, hard hat, spool of wire rope, carne asada burrito, and I'm over 200 pounds like that. So you want to think about, is what is my ladder rated at? And does my body weight and tools and everything exceed the weight rating of that ladder? Um, and where you will find that is on the label. When we talk about inspection, we're going to talk about how important labels are. And one of the things you want to look for is the weight rating of the ladder. So most every ladder you see here is rated at either 300 or 375. Anything under 250 really doesn't belong in a professional working environment. So check out the weight rating of your ladder, make sure you're not exceeding it. And then of course, we already talked about choosing the right height ladder for the job. Make sure you're taking a moment in advance to make sure your ladder is tall enough for your job. So that's selecting the right ladder. Moving on from selection, the next step is inspection. Taking a, a moment or two to inspect your ladder and make sure it's a safe piece of equipment because you could be the safest, most conscientious climber in the world but if your ladder falls apart on you, it didn't do you a darn bit of good. So we're gonna use this ladder here, this A-frame. This is, once again, has wheels on it. The first thing you wanna inspect on your ladder is the ladder feet. Okay? So these are your connection with the earth. Um, just like you wouldn't wanna to come to work with boots that have holes in the bottom or drive to work in a car that has threads showing on the tires. You want to make sure that these things aren't ground down to nothing, missing, broken, burned, or anything like that, because this is your contact with yours. So if they are cracked, broken, burned, missing, you need to take that ladder out of service, replace the ladder feet, and then put it back into service. Super important. Okay, so moving on from the ladder feet, next thing you want to check is the side rails. Inspect the side rails of the ladder, make sure they're not cracked, burned, uh, no holes drilled through them. You know, a lot of times people will drill holes in them so they can hang things off of them. Look for that. Um, also, when you store ladders on a rack, sometimes they'll rub. So look for any rub points, any excessive rubbing points. And also, what happens to fiberglass ladders when you leave them out in the sun? They fade, correct? OSHA says that ladders with fiberglass side rails should not be stored in direct sunlight. But a lot of people do it. They come, you know, they finish up on Friday, the last thing they want to do take the ladder off the truck just to come back Monday morning and put it back up there. Um, so, so they leave it up there. So the average fiberglass ladder when left in direct sunlight or stored in direct sunlight, uh, we say three to four years in the Southwest. Some parts of the country might be four to seven years, just all depends.
But think about what the ladder looked like when you got it. Was it dark black? Was it a, a nice, brilliant green, dark orange? You come in, you realize your ladder is now a translucent gray. It's a bright pink. You rub your fingers down the side rails. You rub your fingers down the side rails and you're getting fiberglass on your fingers. Ask yourself, how long has this ladder been in, in the field? Oh, four or five years, stored in the sun, out in Southern California. It's probably time to replace that ladder. So, take a look at the side rails and make sure you don't have excessive pain. Next thing you want to do is check out your labels. The lack of clear and legible labels is the number one OSHA citation that's issued when it comes to ladders. So, you want to make sure that the labels are present. Now, this label here that says select step, not so important. The labels that are the most important are the part number, where it was made, who made it, what it's rated at, what type of ladder it is, any OSHA or ANSI information, what type of uh, you know, uh, configurations the ladder can be used in. So, a lot of times these uh, labels will get sheared off, they'll get faded in the sun, they'll get covered in paint. If you can't read the labels, take the ladder out of service, get yourself some new labels for it, and replace the labels. All right, next thing you want to inspect is your rung to rail connections. It's a common stress point. The ladder gets overloaded or hit by equipment. A lot of times these will crack. You'll see cracks around this hardware here. So look for any kind of cracks. They're missing hardware, rusted hardware, anything like that. Check the rung to rail connections. Now the rungs themselves should be relatively clean, not you know shining and twinkling in the sun, but free of oil, grease, dirt, debris. Uh, you'll see that they have these ridges on here. These ridges are designed to grab onto the bottom of your foot. So if these ridges are caked up with epoxy, mud, concrete, whatever it is, maybe take a steel brush, brush them out, and get those cleaned up. Now OSHA also says a ladder with a damaged rung shall not be used. Okay, so you know, over time, they'll get little dings in them. You know, nobody, nobody's giving these things a lot of TLC. They're on a job site, they get a ding here and there. But we go out to job sites and we see rungs that are bent down like a V with a big crack down the middle. And they say, well, we just step over that rung. Can't do that. Even if it's a rung at the very top of the ladder that you never use, a ladder with a damaged rung shall not be used. So take that ladder out of service, mark it do not use, replace the rung, and then put it back in the service. Uh, check out any of your hardware. If your ladder is equipped with a threader bar, it should be straight, not bent, and it should always lock out in a straight position. Not hanging, dangling in the wind, uh, you know, rusted out, bent. Check that out, look for any kind of damage. Any adjusting hardware, check out, make, that, make sure that's operating properly. And then check the top cap. Uh, a lot of times these get really faded in the sun. Uh, people drop welding slag on them and burn holes in it. Now it looks like Swiss cheese. They get cracked. Look for any kind of damage to the top cap itself. So that's inspecting your A-frame ladder. Moving on to your extension ladder. It's the same basic process. Start with the ladder feet, side rails, rung to rail connections, the rungs themselves, the labels. But then also a lot of times fiberglass ladders are equipped with a rope. Now, real quick. Where do most manufacturers put the rope on their fiberglass or their extension ladder? Right down the middle where you're gonna trip on. So, little giant, in our effort to prevent injuries and save lives, move it off to the side so no more tripping hazard. At many times, when they're on a single pulley system, they get gummed up really bad, and you gotta double, triple wrap and really put some force into these things to deploy the fly section. With the sumo stance uh, and also the regular hyperlite, it's on a double pulley, so you have a mechanical advantage. With two fingers, Deploy that extension ladder just like that. But the point is, check out the rope, make sure it's in good condition. If it looks like it's gonna break, it probably is. I've seen ropes that have been broken and they've tied them in knots back together. That's not good. Also check out the pulleys, make sure they're not coming off the axles, make sure they're operating properly. Next thing you want to check out is your rung locks. Okay. Really really check the rung locks, look for any kind of damage, bends. If they have springs in them, make sure the springs are intact. These keepers tend to break off, but they need to be there, okay? So look for any kind of damage, missing hardware, or any damage to your rung locks. And there's two times you should check the rung locks. The first time is when you're on the ground. The second time is when you're climbing the ladder and you come to the rung locks. Check them again, because now you're transferring from the base section to the fly section. And if those rung locks fail, you're gonna come sliding down. So inspect all that. So that covers inspection. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the third step, setup. Now before you even set up your ladder, you wanna set up your area properly.
make sure it's clear of any tripping hazards, slipping hazards. If there are you know, cords laying around or toolboxes laying around, clean them up. Uh, if there's a spill, clean that up as well. Last thing you want is for someone to trip on something or slip onto your ladder while you're standing on it, okay? So check, check out for any, uh, any tripping and slipping hazards. If there will be pedestrian traffic, put some cones out, some barricade tape, maybe a spotter. You don't want anyone walking into your ladder and you don't want to drop anything on someone as well. So isolate any pedestrian hazards. Also look for vehicular hazards. If you're on a blind corner, put a cone out there or a spotter. You don't want a forklift coming around the corner and taking out your ladder while you're on it. So check that out. Next thing you want to do is look overhead. Before you set up your ladder, take a look overhead. Look for any kind of power lines, uh, conveyors, spinning fan blades, and make sure there aren't any overhead hazards. Never set your ladder up in front of a doorway. Someone comes to the door and they take you out on your ladder. So if you have to work in front of the doorway, make sure you barricade tape the other side, put a spotter, make sure no one's gonna to come to that door. And then OSHA says, ladders shall not be used in high winds, okay? Then they don't tell you what high winds are. So if the wind is blowing like heck that day, not a good day to be on a ladder. So basically you're a big sail on top of a lightweight lever, okay? Um, when we used to work out a boom list, they would ground us at a 25 mile per hour gust. Uh, that's probably a good rule of thumb, but think about it. If the wind is really blowing hard, that's not a good day to be on a ladder. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna set up our ladder. Okay. Let's start with setting up our apron. Fairly simple process. Find a nice, nice flat level surface, which unfortunately is not always a simple process. Okay. Set up your ladder. Now you don't wanna have a ladder that is not level or is wobbling, okay? So if it's not level and it's wobbling or whatever, you have no choice but to either shim one side or uh, basically dig out the high side. So just make sure your ladder is level and not wobbling. If you have an adjustable ladder, such as this select step, you can adjust it up, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 feet, whatever you want. Get it to the proper height and you're going to be working at. Okay, when you set up adjustable ladders, always at the end, make sure you give it a little bit of pull. That kind of locks everything into place and gives you a wider footprint. And if there's someone you like and you trust, have them stand on the ladder for you. It'll give you a little bit more bracing. If you need to work at a 90 degree angle or close to your wall, you can set up a 90 degree angle. If you're working on an uneven surface, set it up on your uneven surface, but make sure that your standing platform is level. Okay? So pretty simple process, set up your A-frame ladder properly, make sure it's level, not wobbly, and you're good to go. So we'll wheel this one out of the way. And now we're gonna cover your extension ladder. Not as simple of a process. First thing we wanna talk about is how to carry your extension ladder, or any ladder in general. If it's equipped with a rope, make sure you tie the rope off. So it's not a tripping hazard. Make sure the fly section is completely retracted. And the ideal way is to always carry it in a nice level flat position. This is the best way to carry a ladder. Uh, the reason being is it's nice and level. And if I lose my balance, I run into something, I simply drop the ladder. Now we do understand that over time, this gets kind of tiring. So a lot of people will carry their extension ladder like this, which make sure you're using proper form and watch for your overhead hazards. You hit something, it tilts your spine backwards and it hyperextends your spine. Another way people carry their ladders is like this, okay? Which is okay, but once again, somebody runs into you and then your spine gets rotated. This is the safest way, because if you get into a jam, I simply drop it and I'm good to go. Now, if you're coming around a blind corner, make sure that the nose is up. This way they can see it coming and they can block it. This here is just a cheap shot to the groin that nobody appreciates. So make sure if you're coming around the corner, you bring the nose up, okay? All right, so that's carrying your ladder. And once again, turning with my feet, not rotating my spine. Now the ideal way to set up your extension ladder is to place it up against your surface. Push it up against there and walk it up one rung at a time, not in a hurry, okay? You don't want to get in a hurry and slip and have the rung hit you in the face. So bring it up one rung at a time and pull it out. 
All right. Now, one of the biggest problems with extension ladders, especially particularly tall extension ladders, is the lack of lateral stability. It's very easy to knock the ladders over. So this is the sumo stand from Little Giant. Just look at these outriggers. I simply deploy these outriggers. And when I do, that makes the ladder twice as wide and six times more stable than any extension ladder in the world. So that right there is a huge safety factor. All right. Now, we want to make sure that our ladder is level. But how do we know it's level? We look at it. Looks level to me. How many times have you hung a picture frame at your house that you swear is level? And then you walk across the room, look back at it. Like, what's going on here? Your eyes play tricks on you. Don't trust your eyes to ascertain what proper level is. If you have a torpedo level, put it on the rail, okay? Or we equip it with a level right here, okay? Now, with most extension ladders, you have no choice but to, when you're going to level it, to shim it with bricks and boards or stuff you find really on the job site or dig out the high side. With these sumo stands, I simply adjust these outriggers, and now I'm using an integral part of the ladder to level my ladder not junk I'm finding laying around the job site. So we can do micro adjustments, dial it in, and now my ladder is absolutely plumb. That's how I want my extension ladder, absolutely plumb. If you're an inch off at the bottom, by the time you're 20 feet up, you're gonna be about 19 inches off, you left the footprint of the ladder, okay? And when do you realize your ladder wasn't level? When you're at the top, but it's doing this. So we're gonna make sure that it's level on the, on the ground. Always deploy your extension ladder. that you don't have to stand on the top three rungs to do your job, or, and, I should say, if you're gonna be using your ladder to get onto another surface, you wanna make sure you have at least three feet of overlap. So, extend your ladder so properly. There is a formula where when you get above 30 odd feet, it changes, but three feet is the rule of thumb. Okay, next thing, when you set up an extension ladder, it should always be set up at a four to one angle of, artic angle of inclination, okay? So for every four feet of working height, that's from the ground to where the ladder touches, there should be one foot out. That comes to 75 and a half degrees. Now, why is that important? Well, what's gonna happen if I climb that ladder right there? It's gonna tip down on me, okay? Conversely, this ladder here can slide out from underneath me. So I wanna make sure I got proper 75 and a half degree angle. And if you don't have a tape measure, a common rule that's used is called the firefighter's rule. So you stand with your toes at the base of the ladder, reach out, and if you grab a rung with a pole in your hand and your arm is parallel with the ground, you're at about 75 and a half degrees. Sort of, once again, we don't like to play guessing games when it comes to safety, so we put a level on the side, which tells you exactly when you're at 75 and a half degrees. So set up your ladder, make sure it's level. Anytime you change the position of the ladder, you want to recheck your level again. Make sure we're at a proper 75 and a half degrees. Boom, okay? Also, make sure you've got even contact with the side rails onto your surface. What's gonna happen if I climb up that ladder there? Once I get about right there, it's gonna teeter-totter on me. So I wanna make sure I've got even contact with the side rails, okay? If you're in loose ground, stake it down. If you can, tie it down at the top, okay? Um, there is a rule where if you're not gonna have three feet of overlap, you have to make sure it's tied at the top and you have grab bars to grab onto. So that's setting up your extension ladder. And that's basic setup of ladders. Okay, let's talk about proper usage. We've been talking now for about 30 minutes and we haven't even climbed our ladder yet. First thing you wanna ask yourself before you climb your ladder is, am I safe to climb today? Anytime you are working at a height, including a ladder, wearing fall protection, you're at a high risk, okay? So if you uh, have been ill, you have an inner ear infection, you've been dizzy, uh, you're not getting any sleep at night, you got new twins at home, you're not getting any sleep, you've been sick, what have you, if you feel you are not safe to climb that day, legitimately, you need to tell somebody, okay? Make sure you are in a proper climbing mode because one accident or one mistake or, or distraction can cause you to have a major accident and a, a serious injury or fatality. So make sure you're safe to climb that day. Next thing you want to do is get yourself in the proper mindset. Distraction is a killer anytime you're on a job site, especially when you're working at a height. Okay, so clear your mind of everything that's going on. 
Maybe you've got a stack of bills piling up on your counter. Uh, you've had a fight with your significant other. Whatever it might be, clear your head and focus on what you're doing. You don't want to be thinking about something else when you're up on that ladder. Okay. Now, it's very important that when I climb, I'm not carrying anything that impedes my ability to climb safely. So if I've got a drill, I don't want to have it in my hand, put it in a holster. If I'm carrying an electric motor up a ladder like this, that's not safe. So if you have things you need to bring up with you, have them in a holster, in your tool belt, uh, perhaps have someone hand it up to you when you get up to your height, or have a rope and pull it up to you when you get there to work, okay? Always enter ladders, never enter ladders from the side. You always wanna move straight into your ladder, okay? If you do this enough, eventually what you're gonna do is this. Now you've blown your ankle out, you sent the ladder down onto someone's head, so always step out and move straight into your ladder. Okay, now we're gonna start climbing. When ascending and descending, OSHA requires that we maintain three points of contact at all times. So that's been defined as two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand. Because people are like, well, what about my elbow? What about my belly? What about my chin? No, two hands and one foot, two feet and one hand, okay? And you're supposed to maintain three points of contact when ascending and descending. So the best way to do that is to always climb with a pulse of one, okay? So if I'm climbing with a pulse of one, only moving one digit at a time, that means the other three digits are naturally in contact with the ladder. So I'm gonna climb up, I'm gonna go one, 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 one. Doesn't matter what order you do it in. One, 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 one. As long as you are only moving one digit at a time, okay? Now when you get up to work, you wanna make sure you never overreach, okay? More people are killed because they're just gonna drill that one last hole and over they go. So if you've got to move your belt buckle outside the side rail to do your job, you need to go down, move your ladder, and come back up. Not bunny hop your ladder over, not shimmy walk your A-frame ladder over, never move a ladder with anyone on it, including yourself. So go down, move your ladder, and come back up, okay? Always making sure I'm staying inside the side rails doing my work, okay? Not leaning back too much to do my work, okay? Facing the inside of my ladder. Okay, and sometimes you might be up on your ladder and you know, you didn't hydrate properly, you haven't got enough sleep, you've been sick, whatever it might be, and you feel yourself starting to lose consciousness or whatever, or getting sick. Now, if you're only a couple feet off the ground, go ahead and get down up your ladder. But if you're way up on your ladder, a better option might be to stop, lean into your ladder, and tie yourself up in, okay? Get yourself tied up in your ladder and regain your composure. Tell somebody there's a problem, hey, I'm having an issue up here, give me, give me some help or something, okay? Because what you don't wanna do is lose consciousness when you're on your way down right here, okay? If I lose consciousness here, okay, I might get hung up on my ladder, I might dislocate my shoulder, it's gonna be a slower tip to the ground. If I move, lose consciousness here, I'm going straight to the ground. So, get your faculties in order, get yourself inside your ladder, clear your head. Now, once you feel better, now you can come down your ladder. Many accidents happen when people are coming down the ladder because you have gravity, and inertia. Also, people weren't thinking about what they're doing anymore. They're thinking about what they're gonna be doing next. So they're like, okay, I got that done, I gotta do this, 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 and they miss a step and boom. Like I said, distraction is a killer. So keep your head focused on what you're doing. And one, 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 one. All the way down to the bottom step, and down. Okay. What we found is that 20% of ladder accidents happen when people are coming down the ladder. They think they're on the last step of the ladder, but they're not. They're here, or they're here, and they wipe out. Best case scenario, it's a little embarrassing. You look around, man, I hope nobody saw that. Worst case scenario, 50 people are killed every year on the job in same surface falls. They didn't even fall from a height. They fell, they slipped, they hit their head, and they're gone. So it doesn't take a far fall to catastrophically injure you or kill you. So what we've done is we started integrating, and this is a little ladder on our 375 pound Sumo stances, we now have this, but our ground key. This little noise maker here. So now that I have an audio and tactile indicator that I am, in fact, on the last step of the ladder. Okay? But I always recommend, even if you are equipped with a ground cue, you come down, you hear it, you still visually verify it. Maybe you heard something else. Okay? And come okay, when getting on and off your ladder up at a height, always make sure. You're staying tight with your ladder, okay? Nice and tight, and you're moving your body away from the ladder 
not kicking the ladder away from you. Okay, so I'm up on the height. I'm not going to get on top of this trailer because the roof is not designed for my weight and I'm going to go right through it. So I'm just going to illustrate here. I get to the top of my ladder and I stay nice and tight. I drag my body across it. I step onto my surface, staying tight, drag my knee and step straight into my working surface. Straight in. Same thing when you're getting back onto your ladder, okay? Don't just, oh, you're gonna tip the ladder over, okay? Get nice and tight with your ladder. Slide yourself onto it, okay? And then you can come down. And that's proper usage of your ladder. Um, one thing I'm supposed to tell you, it's in the OSHA regs, never take an extension ladder, put it across two surfaces and use it as a bridge. It's required to tell you that. Hopefully I didn't have to tell you that, but you never know. All right, so we've covered selection, inspection, setup, and proper usage. Let's talk about maintenance and storage. Okay, What's, if, you, if in your inspection or anytime you're using your ladder, you find an unsafe condition with your ladder, you need to remove that ladder from service, tag it, do not use, and then do not store it with the other ladders, remove from the other ladders. Because what's gonna happen is people go, okay, they get in a hurry, they grab the ladder, they go off to do their work, they climb up it, they see the sign then, oh, do not use. Oops, too late. Remove it from the other ladders, repair it, and put it back into service, okay? If the ladder is not fixable, cannot be uh, repaired, make sure you destroy that ladder completely. Don't just take a seemingly intact ladder and throw it in a dumpster. People steal ladders from the dumpster in the middle of the night. They're going out stealing copper with your ladder. They electrocute themselves, and then when the EMS shows up, the ladder has your company's name on it. Not a good situation, okay? So if you're gonna just take, out, take a ladder out of service, destroy it, don't just chop it into sections. There was actually a case where the ladder was chopped into sections, someone stole that section, used it to break into a house, and then the company was brought into, you know, they got a call from the attorneys and all that stuff. So if you're gonna get rid of it, chop it into sections and cut it down the middle. Make it absolutely unusable. There are fun videos online where people take a loader and smash them into bits. Just make sure that that ladder is not usable and then put it in the dumpster, okay? Um, when you go to put your ladders away, when you're storing your ladders, a lot of times you'll be carrying your ladder, you're hot, you're sweaty, you're tired, your friends are texting you, they're having a good time, so you just throw the ladder in the corner. Don't do that. Set it down nicely. Don't set it near sources of heat. You don't want a generator. There's exhaust melting the side of your fiberglass ladder. Don't store it in direct sunlight and don't store it near chemicals. Take care of your ladder so when you come in the next day, you or your coworker have a safe ladder to find. So to review, the five steps to ladder safety are one, selection. Make sure it's the right material, the right height, the right type of ladder, and the right weight rating. Just like anything, you use the right tool for the job, and that includes your ladder. Second, inspection. Each and every time before you use your ladder, you need to inspect it and make sure it's a safe piece of equipment. Inspect the ladder feet, the side rails, the rung to rail connections, the rungs themselves, the labels, any type of hardware from the top cap on your extension ladder. Check the rung locks and the rope as well. Third, setup. Uh, setting up uh, your ladder, isolating any kind of pedestrian hazards, vehicular hazards, overhead hazards, um, you know, high winds, things like that. Don't set it up in front of a doorway. Setting up your ladder is always level and plumb, not wobbly. Okay, your extension ladder, always with a four to one angle of inclination, level and with even contact on both sides. And stake it down or tie it down if you can. Uh, fourth, proper usage. Make sure you're in the right mindset, might right physiological health to climb that day. Make sure you clear your head out. Don't carry heavy things, up, heavy things up the ladder with you that impede your ability to climb safely. Maintain three points of contact at all times. Do not overreach. And then always make sure when you're coming down the ladder, you are in contact with the second, last step of the, the ladder before you step off. And then fifth, maintenance and storage. Take care of your ladder so when you come in the next day, you got a safe piece of equipment to climb. So that includes our, or excuse me, I should say, that concludes our presentation on ladder safety. Appreciate all your time. For any more information, you can check out our website, h3salesandmarketing.com, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.